Hello, and welcome to the therapeutic breakout session with Genentech, where we will be talking about their newly approved drug for NMOSD in spring. The Guthrie Jackson Charitable Foundation is proud to be a source of information about NMOSD. Our comments are based on professional advice, published experience, and expert opinion, but we do not represent therapeutic recommendations, dietary recommendations, or prescription recommendations. For specific information and advice, please consult your personal physician. Today, I'm proud to have Genentech joining us and congratulations on your newly approved drug, Inspring. Um, I want to introduce Joe Dulay. Joe is the Patient Advocacy Relations Lead for the NMOSD at Genentech. She is responsible for building relationships with the NMO advocacy community. Joe, I'm gonna turn it over to you now to introduce your speakers and introduce a little bit about Genentech to our audience. Great, thank you, Lisa. And thanks to the entire team at the Guthrie Jackson Charitable Foundation for the opportunity to speak today. As Lisa said, my name is Joe Dulay and I am the Patient Advocacy Relations Lead for NMOSD at Genentech. Genentech is a leading biotechnology company that discovers, develops, manufactures, and commercial, commercializes medicines to treat patients with serious and life-threatening medical conditions. I, and I think all of us know someone living with a neurological disorder, and we've seen how that disorder can impact that person. At Genentech, our hope is to create a tomorrow where neurological disorders like NMOSD no longer limit human potential. Through the development of new medicines that can slow the progression of disease, we hope to help preserve what makes people who they are. Just a few weeks ago, on August 14th, the FDA approved Enspring as the first and only subcutaneous treatment for adults living with AQP4 positive NMOSD. Today, our goal is to share information about Enspring. I would now like to introduce my colleague, Tiffany Bearwalt. Tiffany is a senior manager in the neuroimmunology team at Genentech. She has helped to lead the launch planning and commercialization of Enspring, and as our access strategy lead is dedicated to addressing the unique access needs of patients with NMOSD. Tiffany, it's all yours. Thank you, Joe, and hi, everyone. It is my pleasure and such a special honor to speak to you all today about Enspring, which I am so excited to announce is now approved for NMOSD in AQP4 positive adults. Before I jump into the following slides, I want to provide an overview of everything I'll be sharing with you all today. First, I'll share some information about Enspring and how it is thought to work. Next, I'll review the clinical trial results of Enspring. I'll then walk you through how to take Enspring, which is the first self-administered NMO treatment you can take at home after proper guidance. I will then share more about our patient support services for Enspring. We believe every person should get the Genentech medicine their doctor prescribed, and we offer programs to help make this happen. I'll then spend some time reviewing important safety information before sharing a video from Kyla. Kyla will share her journey with NMO and her experience with Enspring. Last but not least, we'll open it up for Q&A. I also want to point out that similar to this page you see here, you will see snippets of safety data at the bottom of each page throughout this presentation. In addition to this, I will spend time walking through all of the important safety information at the end. So what is Enspring? I'll start by providing some information around who can take Enspring and how Enspring is thought to work. The specific way Enspring works is not completely understood, but it is thought to affect the protein interleukin-6 or IL-6. Enspring is the first treatment for NMOSD designed to block IL-6, a protein made by immune cells in our bodies that can play a key role in the inflammation that occurs in people with NMOSD. And as Joe mentioned earlier at the start, Enspring is approved for neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder in AQP4 positive adults. Enspring is designed to block the action of a protein in your body called IL-6, which is believed to play a part in NMOSD. Without Enspring, IL-6 connects to the cell surface via its receptor and activates the cell. 
with N-spring, N-spring blocks IL-6 from connecting to the cell surface via the receptor and prevents the activation of the cell. Now I'll provide some details around the clinical trial results of N-spring. First, we'll provide some information around what a clinical trial is and what the goal of the N-spring clinical trials were. A clinical trial tests how well a medical treatment works in people and can determine whether a new treatment is beneficial and safe. Two clinical trials, the first one, N-spring alone versus placebo, and the second being N-spring plus immunosuppressive therapy or ISTs, which might include azathioprine, mycophenolate, or oral steroids, versus placebo plus IST, were conducted to prove that N-spring alone or N-spring plus IST could lower the risk of relapse in adults with NMOSD. The clinical trials for N-spring represented a diverse group of patients with NMOSD. Patients from countries around the world participated in these trials. N-spring again was studied in two trials that include a balanced number of patients in terms of age, gender, AQP4IgG status, and the severity of their disease. Based on how it was studied in clinical trials, however, treatment with N-spring is appropriate for adults with NMO who are AQP4 positive. Again, N-spring was the only NMOSD therapy proven in two separate distinct randomized controlled phase three trials, both as a monotherapy or N-spring versus placebo and with concurrent immunosuppressive therapy. In study one or N-spring versus placebo trial, 95 patients were included in this study and patients were randomly chosen to take N-spring or placebo. N-spring met the main study goal by reducing the risk of relapse and resulted in more AQP4 positive adult patients who were relapse free at two years. I'll now go into some details around what this looks like in terms of the numbers. In adult AQP4 positive patients on N-spring, N-spring significantly reduced the risk of relapse by 74% versus placebo. More patients were relapse free at two years with N-spring versus placebo. 77% of AQP4 positive patients on N-spring were relapse free at two years versus 41% on placebo. In study two, or N-spring plus ISTs versus placebo plus IST, 76 patients were included in this study. And again, patients were randomly chosen to take N-spring or placebo. Similar to study one, N-spring met the main study goal by reducing the risk of relapse and resulted in more AQP4 positive IgG patients, AQP4 IgG positive patients who were relapse free at two years. More specifically, in those adult AQP4 positive patients on N-spring plus immunosuppressive therapy, N-spring significantly reduced the risk of relapse by 78% versus placebo. More patients were relapse free at two years with N-spring versus placebo. 91% of AQP4 positive patients on N-spring were relapse free at two years, compared to 57% of AQP4 positive patients on placebo plus IST. Now I'll provide some details and information around taking N-spring. N-spring treatment can be self-administered. Here on the right, you'll see an illustration of the N-spring pre-filled syringe. N-spring is intended for home use or elsewhere under the guidance of a healthcare provider. After proper training, an adult patient or their caregiver may inject N-spring. There are resources you can use to understand how to properly administer N-spring. Many of these resources on av are available at www.nspring.com, including a video with details on how to self-administer N-spring to reinforce and refresh the techniques you learn from your healthcare provider. Initiating N-spring requires three starting doses administered at three week intervals. When you begin N-spring, you will administer your initial starting dose, two weeks later, your second starting dose, and two weeks after that, your third starting dose. After those starting doses, 
Ongoing doses are taken every four weeks. So again, during the first four weeks, you will have three starting doses or injections, that's one pre-filled syringe of Enspring, two weeks apart for those first three doses. After that, ongoing doses are taken every four weeks. In regards to the storage and handling of Enspring, Enspring should be refrigerated at 36 degrees Fahrenheit to 46 degrees Fahrenheit in its original box or carton to protect it from light. If necessary, unopened Enspring can be removed from and returned back to the refrigerator prior to administering it. You should not freeze Enspring and you should not shake it. If stored at room temperature, the total combined time out of refrigeration should not exceed eight days at a temperature that does not exceed 86 degrees Fahrenheit. This allows you to take Enspring in a location that is most appropriate for you at the time. In regards to patient support, our focus on patients extends to the programs that we've created to help patients get the Genentech medicine they have been prescribed. Once you and your doctor have decided that Enspring might be the right treatment for you, we have programs that can help based on your unique needs as individuals living with NMOSD. Enspring Access Solutions is the place to turn to for answers and support. We offer a number of services, including a dedicated patient navigator, who is your personal guide throughout your treatment with Enspring. We also offer supplemental injection training and support, as well as financial assistance to help you with the cost of your Enspring. Your patient navigator, again, is dedicated to you and your treatment journey and can help with all of the following. They will work with your doctor's office and or specialty pharmacy to help you get your medicine. They can explain how your insurance can cover your end spring treatment. They can help you find financial assistance programs and enroll, navigate, um, and tell you more about the end spring copay program if you're eligible. If they are available to answer questions about Enspring and can teach you about Enspring supplemental injection training. You should feel supported along your entire treatment journey. In order to reach out to a patient navigator, you can call 1-844-ENSPRING without the E or 844-677-7964. Again, that's 844-ENSPRING. We can also help with the cost of your medicine, and we know this is a great concern. Genentech is committed to helping you get the end spring your doctor prescribed. Your patient navigator can help you find assistance options so you can pay for end spring. If you have a commercial insurance plan, you may be able to use the end spring copay program. If you have commercial or public insurance, such as Medicare or Medicaid, you may be referred to an independent copay assistance foundation. If you have no insurance coverage or you can't pay for your medicine, the Genentech Patient Foundation may be able to help. In regards to the cost of your medicine, there may be options that can help you afford your Genentech medicine, no matter what type of health insurance you have. We also have in-home injection training support. Enspring clinical educators are nurses who provide supplemental injection training to patients or their caregivers to ensure that they are prepared to administer Enspring. Please note that clinical educators do not inject patients with Enspring. However, they can set up a free one-on-one -on -one, in-person or virtual injection training visit and provide ongoing injection training support throughout your Enspring treatment journey. Again, for more details on everything that I just described, call 844-N-SPRING or 844-677-7964. And in, in addition to this, all of this information can be found online at www.nspring.com and more specifically this link here slash resources. I'll now review some important safety information for NSPRING. Enspring is a prescription medicine used to treat neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder in adults who are aquaporin-4 or AQP4 antibody positive. 
It is not known if N-Spring is safe and effective in children. You should not take N-Spring if you are allergic to N-Spring or any of the ingredients in N-Spring, have an active hepatitis B infection, have active or untreated and active tuberculosis. N-Spring may cause serious side effects, including infections. Infections can increase your risk of serious infections, some of which can be life-threatening. Talk to your healthcare provider if you're being treated for an infection or call them right away if you think you have signs of an infection with or without a fever, such as the details listed below. Your healthcare provider will check if you have an infection and treat it if needed before you start or continue to take Enspring. Your healthcare provider should also test you for hepatitis and tuberculosis before you start taking Enspring. All required vaccinations should be should be completed prior to starting N-Spring. People using N-Spring should not be given live or live attenuated vaccines. Live or live attenuated vaccines should be given at least four weeks before you start N-Spring. Your healthcare provider may provide or may recommend that you get a non-live or inactivated vaccine, such as some of the seasonal flu vaccines. If you plan to get a non-live vaccine, it should be given whenever possible, at least two weeks before you start N-Spring. N-Spring may also increase liver enzymes. Your healthcare provider should order blood tests to check your liver enzymes before and while you are taking N-Spring. Your healthcare provider will tell you how often you need to have these blood tests. Make sure you get all of your follow-up blood tests as ordered by your healthcare provider. Your healthcare provider will tell you if you need to wait to start N-Spring if your liver enzymes are increased. Enspring may also cause low neutrophil count. It can cause a decrease in your neutrophil counts in your blood. Neutrophils are white blood cells that help the body fight off bacterial infections. Your healthcare provider should order blood tests to check that your neutrophil counts while you are taking Enspring. Enspring may also cause serious allergic reactions and serious allergic reactions that may be life-threatening have happened with other medicines like Enspring. Tell your healthcare provider before taking your next dose if you have hives, rash, or flushing after your injection. Seek medical attention right away if you have any symptoms of serious allergic reaction, such as the items listed below. Before taking Enspring, tell your healthcare provider and your doctor about all of your medical conditions, including if you have had or think you have an infection, have liver problems, have ever had hepatitis B or are a carrier of the hepatitis B virus, have had or have ever been in contact with someone with tuberculosis, have had a recent vaccination or are scheduled to receive any vaccination, and are pregnant, think you may be pregnant or plan to become pregnant. It is not known if Enspring will harm your unborn baby. Again, if you are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed, it is also not known if Enspring passes into your breast milk. Talk to your healthcare provider about the best way to feed your baby if you take Enspring. Tell your healthcare provider about all the medicines you're taking, including prescription and over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, and herbal supplements. The most common side effects of Enspring include a sore throat or runny nose, also formerly known as narrow phasangitis, rash, fatigue, extremity pain, headache, upper respiratory tract infection, nausea, inflammation of the stomach lining or gastritis, or joint pain known as arthralgia. And with that important safety information, I am now very excited to introduce you to Kyla, who will share her journey with NMO and her experience with Enspring. Enspring is a prescription medicine used to treat neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder, NMOSD, in adults who are aquaporin-4, AQP4, antibody positive. It is not known if Enspring is safe and effective in children. My name is Kyla. I'm a transition coordinator at a high school, and I help parents, teachers, and students advocate for what they need. Being an advocate for others has really helped me advocate for myself. 
My journey with NMO started in 2014. I lost vision in my left eye. I couldn't really see anything out of it. No shapes, no shadows, nothing. I went to the hospital. Um, they ran some tests and they determined that I had multiple sclerosis. So they gave me steroids. My vision did improve. Eventually my symptoms started to progress and I started to have new symptoms. Like my lower back ached a lot. The fatigue got really bad. Eventually I lost all sensation from the waist down. I really felt like I was trapped within my own body. It was very frustrating for me. I continued to have steroid treatments and I wasn't getting any better. And that made me really question the MS diagnosis. My ophthalmologist referred me to a neurologist he worked with and they were able to see me quickly and they ran some more tests and were able to give me the new diagnosis of neuromyelitis optica, NMO. I was quite surprised, but I felt relief in knowing that it did have a name and they were able to tell me what it was. I was excited to be working with a neurologist that knew how to help me. At the time, my neurologist explained that there were no approved disease modifying treatments for NMO. However, he did mention a clinical trial for a drug called satralizumab, which was for people with NMO. And of course, satralizumab is now known as Inspring. I didn't really have any hesitation. I was willing to try anything at that point. Before I started on the clinical trial, we discussed all the risks and potential benefits of the treatment. My doctor explained to me that there were serious side effects with Inspring. Endspring may cause serious side effects, including infections, increased liver enzymes, low neutrophil count, serious allergic reactions. The most common side effects of Endspring include sore throat, runny nose, nasopharyngitis, rash, fatigue, extremity pain, headache, upper respiratory tract infection, nausea, inflammation of the stomach lining, gastritis, joint pain, arthralgia, my doctor and I are happy with my results on InSpring. Of course, everyone's experience with InSpring is different. I know a relapse could always be a possibility, so I keep in good contact with my neurologist and we talk about all the different issues that I may be having. It is important for me to do something for myself every day. I love to take my dogs on walks. Some days I just go maybe a block and then other days I feel better and we can go farther. So it just kind of depends on how I feel and they're good with whatever we do. I totally see NMO as a disease that is manageable. I take InSpring as prescribed by my doctor so that I can reduce my risk of relapse. I have a good support network, I advocate for myself, I do whatever I can to make sure that I'm being mindful of my stress level um, I try to watch my diet, and I try to make sure I get a good night's sleep every night. I feel like I'm on the right track with my treatment program. To me, that is everything. Wow, what an inspirational story. Thank you, Kala, for sharing that with us. And Tiffany, your presentation was amazing. I learned so much, and I know our NMOSD community did as well. Um, in saying that, we do have some patient questions that have come in that I would like to um, ask you guys. Um, first off is, uh, and I know some of these questions you answered in your presentation, but I think it's always important to review them again. Um, are there vaccines required before starting in spring? There are no vaccines required before starting treatment with in spring. However, any required immunizations should be completed prior to starting in spring. Again, as I mentioned earlier, people using in spring should not be given live or live attenuated vaccines. Those live or live attenuated vaccines should be given at least four weeks before you start in spring. Your healthcare provider may recommend that you get a non-live or inactivated vaccine, such as some of the seasonal flu vaccines. 
If you do plan to get a non-live or inactivated vaccine, it should be given whenever possible, at least two weeks before you start end spring. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, the next one says, I worry about having to start IVIG. Has there been any research on your product's effectiveness for MS and NMO if IVIG is commonly indicated? That's a good question. So N-Spring or satrolizumab is only approved in AQP4 positive um, NMOSD in adult patients, but not for MS. N-Spring was studied in two phase three randomized controlled trials. And in the second study or study two, N-Spring was administered in combination with ISTs such as azathioprine, mycophenolate, mofetil, and oral steroids. Whereas in study one, investigated end spring alone or as monotherapy. In both of these studies, potential rescue therapy for clinical relapse did include IVIG, pulse IV steroids, and or apheresis, including plasma exchange and plasmapheresis. We do not have research on or data on taking the products together. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about insurance. Um, there's some questions, one of which is, what has been the experience with insurance coverage? Have there been issues due to the high cost of the drug? Great question. So we have only been approved for a few weeks now. So we are gathering data and learning as we go. If you enroll in Enspring Access Solutions, you will work with a patient navigator who can check your coverage and costs and find out if your health, health insurance plan covers your medicine and how much your out-of-pocket costs might be. Coverage will vary based on each individual's health plan, and so we recommend you reach out and find out the information that's specific to you. How difficult is it to qualify for your copay assistance, seeing as these drugs are highly priced, even with insurance coverage? And also, typically, what is the average cost for patient responsibility? We understand that your medicine can be costly, and we can help you find assistance that may help you pay for your Genentech medicine. Genentech is committed to helping you get the end spring that your doctor has prescribed. And your patient navigator can help you find those assistance options so that you can pay for Enspring. If you have commercial health insurance and meet other eligibility criteria, the Enspring copay program may be able to help you pay for your medicine. You may also be referred to an independent copay assistant foundation, which is a charitable organization that gives you financial assistance options for your medicines. If you don't have insurance coverage, or have financial concerns and meet certain eligibility criteria, you may be able to get free medicine from the Genetic Patient Foundation. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, we have a question from some pediatric parents asking, can InSpring be given to a pediatric patient? And will you do or have you done pediatric trials to determine safety? Yes, yeah, so the FDA determined that safety and efficacy could not be evaluated in adolescents given the population size within the phase three clinical trial study two that studied satralizumab. End spring is therefore FDA, FDA approved to treat adults with AQP4 antibody positive NMOSD. Additional studies are ongoing, including the open label extension studies and others that continue to evaluate the safety and efficacy of end spring though we do not have plans to conduct further studies in adolescents at this time. What are the most common side effects of Enspring? Sure, so the most common adverse reactions of Enspring with an incidence of more than 15% were nasopharyngitis or the common cold, headache, upper, upper respiratory tract infection, gastritis, rash, arthralgia, extremity pain, fatigue, and nausea. Are there any contraindications? Yes, you should not take Enspring if you are allergic to Enspring or any of the ingredients in Enspring, if you have an active hepatitis B infection, or if you have active or untreated inactive latent tuberculosis. Thank you. Um, as part of the NMOSD community, there are questions that 
have come in from MOG patients, and uh, the next couple of questions will cover that. Is this medication safe for MOG patients and seronegative NMOSD patients? Enspring is approved for NMOSD in adults who are Acroporn 4 antibody positive. Are you developing any drugs for MOG antibody positive patients? No, not at this time. A question's come in from a patient. Um, will this drug help with fatigue, numbness, and other symptoms I have? No. So the key secondary endpoints in study one and study two were pain and fatigue, which are prominent symptoms of NMOSD and disability. Unfortunately, this score was not different between the patients receiving Enspring or placebo in either study. Thank you. Uh, is this considered a chemotherapy drug? No. Do you have or plan to have other clinical trials for NMOSD? So additional studies are ongoing, including the open label extension studies and others that continue to evaluate the safety and efficacy of Enspring. Great. Um, this last question, uh, I think, is a very important one, and it talks about doctors and how patients can interact with their doctor. It says, I want to try Enspring, but my doctor is hesitant. I like the convenience of giving myself the injection and not having it interfere with my life as my infusions do now. Have you met much resistance with doctors wanting to prescribe Enspring, and do you have any tips for those of us wanting to talk to our doctors about switching? Yes, so we encourage patients to have an open dialogue with their healthcare providers to dis discuss both the risks and the benefits of treatment options. Patients should explain what is important to them, like how frequently a medicine is administered and how that medicine is administered. Thank you, Tiffany, for sharing your knowledge today and for your presentation. Thank you, Joe um, and Kyla. And uh, on behalf of Guthy Jackson, I would love to again um, extend our congratulations to you all for your hard work in getting InSpring approved. And I know our NMO patient community is very excited to have this option. Um, the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation is conducting an ongoing survey about the impact of COVID-19 on NMOSD. We need your help whether or not you've had COVID-19. Your response to this survey is critical as we plan our future research projects. Our patient community has been our greatest resource over the years in shaping the future of NMOSD. Those of you who have already taken the first part of this survey, we really need you to take the second part as you only have a limited time to do this. And we want to thank you in advance for all of your help. The survey can be found on the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation website at www.guthyjacksonfoundation.org or you can find the link on the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation Facebook page. This is Lisa McDaniel, Advocacy Coordinator for the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation. Thank you all for joining us and please be sure to mark your calendars for next Friday for our next therapeutic breakout session as we hear from Alexion on their approved drug Solaris. Thank you so much for joining us today.